with all, um, I guess we could say, got it. <laughs> okay. Um, what we're going to try to do is a little bit different for me. I mean, uh, and this is uh, often uh, there's an issue of uh, congestion and words and people banging into each other, video or audio. So what we're going to try to do this time is uh, allow people to uh, unmute uh, in if they uh, care to, uh, so that they can ask questions verbally, uh, but uh, keep uh, their uh, video uh, muted, if you will, unless they ask a question, so that what I can do is I can keep an eye out for the video, and if people show up on the video, uh, I can... Uh, assume that they, they have a question to ask. Uh, in addition to that, we can also, or you're available uh, for chat. And you can, if you ask, if you want to ask a question, uh, you can send uh, a question via chat. Uh, mind you, I being trying to uh, address the class and looking at my presentation and such, uh, will poss possibly not see chat-based uh, Request, but I will uh, promise that uh, uh, if you had something to ask, especially if it's not an urgent one, uh, I will uh, save the the chat history of the of our class and look over it at uh, uh, you know after class and be able to uh, you know uh, possibly answer a question if you just wanted to ask a private question because you didn't want to interrupt anything. So, uh, by and large, uh, hopefully. Uh, if you have a question, uh, you come up with a, uh, you put a video on, uh, hopefully uh, there'll be not too much collision between multiple people asking questions at the same time. But we'll try uh, to see how that goes. So uh, the class here is Introduction to Programming Using Python. And what I mean to be is that uh, the main principles here that I'm trying to uh, produce uh, or provide are really how to program, what's programming about, and uh, using Python is a, is a um, technique, if you will. There are many other programming languages, but Python is a very uh, popular one, and to learn things, you often need a, uh, you know, a, a particular instance. You, it's like you can't teach skiing very well if you don't provide somebody's skis. So in this case, you can't, it's hard going to be produce uh, programming without pro using a, a programming language. So, uh, and by the way, uh, this mode of uh, uh, display uh, is mainly the, 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 the slide you're interested in is here. Uh, this gives me a little capability here of, of easily uh, changing a slide. So you don't have to worry about not being able to read this stuff aside. Uh, what I'm presenting is, is this slide here. So uh, uh, I've had uh, many, many years of programming uh, in engineering fields, in scientific fields, and financial fields, uh, commercial, the scientific uh, systems languages, uh, systems programming. Uh, you don't have to know the details so much, but this just give you a, a sense uh, the language, programming language might not mean too much to you, but if you've heard of the language C or C++ or Perl or Java or Python or assembly, uh, those languages I've had uh, many years of experience in, in each one of them. Uh, this word assembly is really a shorthand for the very, very lowest level programming uh, in any computer, virtually every computer uh, built has a uh, very, very low level programming language called assembly. Uh, nowadays, most people don't ever do this. Once upon a time, that was the only game in town and it was a different game uh, for virtually every computer. Uh, new area as well, I'm uh, looking to produce uh, computer games for the young, uh, mainly my grandchildren's age. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm in the process of uh, game programming is, is, is a new field for me because most of my adult computing uh, 
things have been doing, quote, real stuff. <laughs> Although nowadays people make uh, a fair amount of money uh, doing games. Uh, the course objectives, uh, programming for non-programmers. Uh, if you are already a programmer and just don't know Python, I've mentioned that uh, this may not be the course for you, but I won't turn you away. It's just that if you're already a programmer, uh, there are a number of tutorials and programming classes around that'll go at a much uh, you know, aggressive uh, pace than we will. Uh, we wanna demonstrate the operations and methods of programming using Python as an example. Uh, also, we, we are gonna teach Python. Don't, don't, uh, don't worry that we're not gonna cover Python uh, or at least uh, cover our, a lot of Python, but we're uh, going to teach, to demonstrate methods and operations of programming. And we're gonna enable, hopefully, and energize new programmers. That means you. And uh, don't fear that if you if you don't become a, a programmer, uh, if you will, uh, I think you may find that just the knowledge, uh, a, a more than cursory knowledge of the programming and a programming language will put you in good stead to understand when you hear uh, the Mars probe uh, uh, after billions of dollars and years of foot uh, ran into a uh, a hill once and uh, because of a computer error, a programming error, uh, you might get a better uh, feeling of what it is to, to make a computer error or to fix a computer error uh, by knowing a little bit more deeply. And important, we are going to learn by doing. I, you are going to learn by programming. Maybe not the biggest programs in the world, but non-trivial programmers, non trivial programs, uh, which may start be a start to something uh, bigger. Uh, sort of like the first, if for skiers or surfers or what have you, uh, swimmers, uh, you first learn and maybe you do a small uh, thing on a lap of a pool or a hill, but you get, you start to learn and that's the basis of uh, further uh, exploits. Um, the online course here, uh, using Zoom, uh, if any background noise, if you have a lot of background noise, uh, please mute just so that it doesn't raise, uh, you know, a lot of noise for your, uh, if you don't have a lot of that background noise, then you don't have to worry about muting. Uh, to say what we're gonna talk about, uh, this is relatively new, <coughs> so we're gonna see how this works. Uh, disable your own video, uh, which reduces the potential uh, too much video uh, sharing uh, uh, tends to reduce the clarity some, on some displays. So we're, we're just saying, uh, if everybody disables their video, unless they ask a question, then we may get the capability of people being able to ask questions with a little uh, visual effect uh, and not uh, have to only uh, uh, resort to listening or to go to chat. Uh, you can ask it, as I said, you can ask uh, uh, questions via chat. Uh, you can, uh, if there's something, a general thing, you can address it to all. As I said, I, I may not be able to uh, concentrate on the chat. In fact, I won't concentrate on the chat because it's, I found it too distracting to, to uh, speak to people and also keep an eye out. So, but, but if you find yourself wanting to ask a question, uh, please do. Uh, but certainly verbally, and uh, if you want to ask it uh, uh, textually, you, you can certainly use chat. Now, as far as the structure, oh, each week we have seven weeks, and the uh, structure is uh, we'll give lecture and practice for about an hour and a half, and then the last half hour of our two-hour session will be follow-up questions. So we get a, a, a fair amount of, doesn't mean you have to re, uh, reserve your questions to that time, but this just be uh, aware that if you have a detailed question that we can't necessarily answer uh, immediately, uh, we have a, a good half hour at the end to, to cover many questions in very detail. Uh, the class, the class, also the structure is gonna be very similar to programming itself. 
this course, in fact, uh, meaning we're going to skip things and then we're going to repeat things, skip valuable things, but to just uh, to try to get things going, it's often necessary to, in programming to just not, because you don't need everything. We're going to repeat things, often things that uh, just turn out to be out of uh, chance, they repeat. Uh, sometimes because they're very critical, we repeat them almost identically or slightly differently and go re revisit. Uh, the student guideline, uh, your uh, plan of attack. If you already know what we're talking about, have patience, right? Because some people may not. But if you're confused or unsure, uh, this is the time to ask a, a question. If for some reason that we can't answer it then, remember we have a, a good half hour section at the end of each uh, session uh, to address those sorts of things. Now, uh, because I made these slides out as a possibility for some people that might just look at the slides, uh, I, I have a, a number of uh, things that just talk about the, the, the estimated outline of the class. So don't worry about those things. I, I tried to color code them to sort of give you a chance to just ignore that for the moment. So the first session, we're going to introduce the, the topic of programming uh, and Python. Uh, but now is a chance to ask any questions in, in general that you might have. All right, if you do, just be, be sure to, to ask them as they uh, arise. Computer programming, I, in general, and this is often my own personal views here, uh, it's telling the computer what to do. Uh, and that means uh, you have something you want done, a calculation or some process, a procedure, uh, in essence, the computer programming is the process uh, and the skill and the uh, way to, to tell that computer what to do. Uh, the language Python is an easy way. And well, easy may be a, a relative term, but by and large, it's popular uh, programming language. There's uh, many programming languages. We showed a few at, the, at, the, at my, uh, I, whatever, my um, list of things. Uh, like most com human languages, though, you don't have to know a whole language to get along with a lot. I mean, people, you know, kids, they learn a, a few words and, okay, they have other gestures. They, but by and large, uh, when you go some of the foreign country or uh, talk with people who have a different language, often you learn a few words and that gets you a fair distance. Uh, programming is very much like that in that regard. So uh, people who know Python, like myself, for years and years, um, are lots of, there are a lot of things about Python. People ask little particular questions, little, little tools, if you will. And I'll say, well, I don't know, but I can find out. So keep that in mind. You don't have to know uh, everything. And there's often many ways of, of accomplishing the the tasks you would like to do. Uh, so in one case, you might want to think about in the back of your mind, what, what should a computer do for you? <coughs> and, um, you know, what should a computer programming language, i.e. Python, do? That's a, a vague question, so don't feel like you have to know it all, but keep that in mind as a possible of things to uh, think about. Okay, now we talked about the major thing, learn by doing. And what we're looking at is Python has a built-in tool called IDLE, um, and that, a shorthand for integrated development and learning environment. Big, big uh, words and, and, and phrase for uh, a way to allow you to do some things uh, at least relatively quickly and easily uh, to learn uh, about the Python or to learn about uh, parts of uh, uh, the task at hand. Um, one of the things that um, uh, IDLE allows to do is it allows to interactively execute uh, Python. 
Uh, for example, you might have a calculation um, in Python. Uh, you, Python can specify the calculation and we'll get to that almost immediately. Uh, I will allow you to execute that as fast as you can type it. Uh, Python, the program and editor and execution. I, when you get to even a smaller program, um, you may want to, to write the program and then execute it. Well, idle will allow uh, and support that activity. And then uh, other things idle has <clears throat> is um, lots of documentation and examples and help. And we'll show that a little bit, but it, it is a, there's just lots of things, um, including a tutorial that's uh, maybe a little aggressive for you now, but you might find uh, uh, something to do uh, later on, <clears throat> maybe even toward the end of the class or after the class, after the sessions, uh, you might use that idle. So uh, hopefully you've done most of this. Uh, you've, you've gone to www.python.org and you've downloaded the latest uh, Python, which in our case, I think today is 3.9. Oh, 3.9, uh, but somewhere about that. Uh, <clears throat> it, it provides, uh, once you do that, there's a Python shell, the documentation, and the editor execution and debugger. So um, in fact, let's just uh, give you a, a sense of if, uh, now this is where your computer might be different. This probably is different than mine. Uh, in uh, my computer, to find idle, I have it um, a little thing in my uh, taskbar. Uh, if you have a, a Windows machine and you don't have it, uh, you can uh, it's here in the start button. You could do I D L E, and often uh, it shows up here and uh, somewhere here nine. You could uh, right click this, and uh, if you haven't already, uh, you might want to. In my case, I've already pinned it, but in your case, if you haven't pinned it, somewhere here it probably says pin to uh, taskbar, and you'll probably want to click that, and you'll come up with a it'll your computer a Windows will um, put a little uh, icon down here that you can start it. Uh, as you want. Uh, if you have another thing like a Windows, um, I don't remember enough about Windows, uh, not Windows, uh, Mac uh, and other uh, computers. I, I don't know exactly how you can get things in your uh, taskbar. Anyway, uh, if you would all uh, start idle by either clicking your taskbar icon or uh, going in here and typing idle uh, or, uh, and this is where I have to rely you on you and your uh, knowledge of your own computer. Hopefully uh, you will get a window like this. I, uh, my window letters are a bit large because I'm used to displaying this for uh, people who uh, on a, um, a screen, so I, I uh, figure out. And actually, by the way, uh, uh, if I look strangely looking at things, I have to apologize. I'm in two weeks span of having to get a, uh, a new set of uh, glass uh, prescriptions. Uh, so now I have my old prescriptions that worked well before I had uh, uh, cataract surgery and uh, now they don't work as well. So uh, I, I, I have to, try my best to not squint too much and make people look uh, strangely at me. So anyway, hopefully uh, everybody has gotten a, uh, uh, what was called the, pi the idle shell. Uh, and if you uh, did it, you should see something like an you know, idle shell and you'll see a, uh, up here, uh, uh, you know, 3.9 or 3.7 or something like that, 3.9.4, I guess. And it'll spit out the sort of a, a very verbose description of uh, exactly uh, 
the version and stuff. And that, that's often in the computer world, often you, uh, the world is full of people who have, who'd love to help you. Uh, but often they, they, what they need is a very precise uh, picture of, you know, where, what environment you have. Uh, so often uh, if you have a thing, oh, you tell them, well, uh, idle doesn't work the way I thought. Um, if you give them this description here, the first two lines, uh, or cut and paste it into your help request, uh, that can often help people. So uh, often uh, uh, you, there's advice here. So uh, now, uh, as I said, we talk about uh, uh, our sandbox. If we just look back a little bit further, uh, and we said the Python documentation, uh, if you say, uh, and you can look at this, uh, if you go to help and you click on help, it'll talk about uh, like a, about, which just gives you a, a little more elaborate picture of, of uh, details, the minutia, if you will. Uh, but uh, more interesting, Python docs is something uh, really worth knowing about because uh, it has just a, a number of nice, useful things. Uh, some of the beginnings, uh, this Python tutorial is a, uh, a very detailed, if you will, description of uh, Python and, and how to do it. It's morally made for people though, that are uh, maybe already programmers. Uh, so, it may be a little tough to, uh, if, if I were, if you, you already had a number of computer pro programming languages or years under your belt and you wanted to load Python, uh, I would point you at the Python tutorial. There are a lot of other online uh, things available, which we will show uh, at some time. But, and then uh, there are a number of other sorts of uh, nifty pieces of information that are worth looking at at some time. But just to let you know that that's what they're there under the, under the help. Uh, in fact, another thing is this turtle demo, which is, uh, I will just show you a small thing to wet your lips as to uh, clock. And then we say press start button. Oh, well, press start button. It says press start button, but then over here is the start button. Um, over to the left here is a bunch of Python, which I don't expect you to really know. And over here is the actual uh, running of the program. So uh, those, this is an example of the sort of thing, uh, Python uh, in graphics, um, you might be able to at least appreciate, if not do someday. So uh, this set of tutorials, this uh, set of uh, uh, examples, which there are a handful, are uh, worth knowing. Anyway, so there, there is this sort of uh, uh, information uh, available um, from your idol. Now. Ray? Yeah. My, yes. Sorry, this is Lauren. Can I just interrupt for a second? You bet. Um, sounds like, seems like there's a couple of people who are asking, uh, Aya said they don't have the Python docs. And Junwei says, I don't have the toolbar either. And they're wondering if it's because if they're using a Mac, would that make a difference? Well, the Mac does, has, a, has a different environment than uh, uh, a different environment than the, uh, and, and I wish they would have asked, I had to, weren't able to put up your video and, and ask a question out loud. Okay. Anyway, just, just to say, uh, that's the sort of question I was hoping people would come up with, but thank you for, for uh, praising me of that. Uh, the, um, on the Mac, uh, you downloaded the program, I hope, the uh, idle. And so somewhere uh, there should be a um, um, way to run new pro, there should be an idle. Uh, that you run. I mean, I, I know that people have done uh, um, use idle on their on their Mac. Uh, um, 
So I would say that um, if you have your, uh, what, if you download a program, other programs, how do you run those other programs from your Mac? I'm using a Mac, this is yeah. Jessica, and mine is working. There is um, the toolbar at the top where I was able to see the help um, section that you were referring to. Um, I was just able to access by going through uh, my finder. And when I downloaded, when I initially downloaded the um, documents that you sent, I just opened it straight from the download and then I moved it to my desktop. Would you have a, can you put up a, uh, what do you call it, an accelerator button or uh, something in the taskbar so that you can, or does it automatically on the Mac show up as a, on your, uh, on your, um, your um, Yeah, you can, you can pin it, you can pin it to your taskbar. I just moved it to my desktop though and then it's just there. Okay. So, and, yeah. So yeah. So it sounds like you could either, uh, so it sounds like the Mac, of, I know who else is, if anybody else is having a problem with this, solve the problem from them. But that that's, <clears throat> when I when I mentioned about the toolbar and it's, are the, this, uh, yeah, it's the, the uh, what do you call it, the startup. Uh, it's just that it's, uh, you can certainly run it from, from uh, an icon. It's just that uh, all I'm saying is you tend to do this a lot. So you want to put it someplace that, that makes it easy for you to do it, uh, you know, bring up this uh, idle uh, shell easily, it, just for it, your own uh, easy uh, of use. It seems like, I think it sounds like I have found it now and Junwei and Alronia, are you guys okay? Is anybody else having any issues? Sounds like everybody who was having issues might have resolved them now, thankfully, so. All right, well, uh, please bring them up again if you haven't. So, in fact, let's go further and say one of the major things in uh, sort of the premier things that started out when people started computers 50 years ago, 60 years ago, uh, with calculations. You know, that, that, that you know, uh, people uh, use computers almost extensively for, uh, exclusively for calculations. So calculations have always been a very major part of a computer Things they did, you can do it by hand, but when the, when the calculations get very intense, uh, you, you just don't uh, want to do it by hand because it's too mistake prone and too time consuming. So just just as an easy uh, uh, beginning thing, uh, Python and Idle, part of Python, allow you to do calculations. And in fact, if you just take for something, uh, and and these calculations are pretty much. And you should do this. You just take one plus two. It, and things you can do in arithmetic, you can do in uh, using almost the same, uh, you know, plus, minus, slash for division, uh, star for multiplication. Uh, you can do those in uh, Python. And you should try just, uh, you know, uh, while I'm doing it here, you can do the same thing or do the same thing. Uh, I said these are very small uh, arithmetics, but very very nice for for you know a, a Python makes for a very very nice a, 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 through idle here makes for a very nice calculator. Even if you don't do anything else in Python, uh, if you find yourself uh, you know having some arithmetic to do, uh, it makes uh, you know uh, whatever. Uh, Uh, whatever guy makes a million dollars a year, how much does he make uh, per week? Well, that's 52, uh, 52 weeks. Now, we, of course, uh, we would expect him to take two, day, two weeks vacation. So uh, often another part of Python to allow for ease of thing is if you've done something and you might want to make a small change to it, you can go up, you can do these arrows up and down, you can go up to the to the line that you want to change. You can then do enter, and it redoes the line. But then it allows you to edit the line with the uh, you know delete the 
to go forward or backspace to go back, and then you can run the line again. So uh, here is a, you know, so calculations you can do, and you should probably, you should do, if you haven't done it before, you should do some, uh, uh, you can make these bigger numbers or smaller numbers. To, uh, you can do all sorts of things. If uh, the whole arithmetic scheme is, uh, you know, two times three uh, plus uh, one, oh, that's seven. Oh, I really meant it two times three plus one. Well, then that should be eight, shouldn't it? Well, oh, that's because just like uh, normal algebra, uh, you can say what I really need to do if I'm doing it in arithmetic, of course, class, is I should use parentheses. And sure enough, uh, parentheses work just fine in arithmetic on your uh, Python. So there is a lot we just looked about here, just real simple, and, and you should play with it. All right. Now, there are some other, uh, uh, we did the, the plus times uh, division uh, subtraction. Uh, for people who want to talk about exponentiation, which is just, you know, repeated multiplication, you can, uh, two to the eighth means two times two times two, you know, eight times. Uh, the star star is a very common way. Some, some computer languages use something different, but most computer languages I know, uh, they use the star star. I mean, if you look at a, a, a uh, algebra book, of course, they, they, they put the two and a, they go up with a superscript and, and put an eight. But since uh, you tend to write text, uh, we don't, we don't uh, want to have things. Uh, it might look pretty, but it's a hard sort of things to type. So in this case, uh, we just use an operator, a star star, meaning exponentiation. Uh, and there are, there are many other operations. Uh, uh, for example, uh, some cases where you want to do, you said two divided by five is uh, 2.5. Well, uh, maybe what you really want is you want the remainder of two divided by five. All right, so there's a, a percent sign that's used. A way to, to keep that, I always used to get uh, confused of which way, is it 2% 5 or 5% 2? Well, think of it this way. The percent looks a lot like uh, a slash with two zeros. You can think of it, it's like the, the way you put the division. Five divided by two gives it, and this means five, the remainder of five divided by two. Mind you, it's if you use this uh, for like decades, I this stuff uh, since or many decades uh, from high school, it, it it's hard to sometimes it's hard for people to uh, the instructor to understand what's difficult for people and not. So just keep that in mind. If something turns out to be un uh, uh, difficult to understand, uh, please um, please let me know. So anyway, so here is the first aspect. You, you can do arithmetic uh, on an idle, and it's the arithmetic. This is just executing what's it, all the stuff here is executing the this amount of Python and giving you the answer. So it's just a nice way of oh, what does Python do with this typing this amount, and it just evaluates it and puts it in. Now, just to give you a little bit more of, uh, let's see, uh, that's just the uh, help. Uh, uh, let's see, maybe, uh, let's see. Oh, I think I went by it. I was gonna go. Uh, let's see. Uh, did I want to do something, show you more thing? Is there just a couple of things? Okay, this, this stuff, and by the way, this, these, these things that are all white without the pretty green, that just means don't worry about what's there. That's just reminders of me what to do uh, in examples, and you want to look at the examples. So just to, to give you a sense of what we meant, this, this, these, Greater than, greater than, or angles, 
that just means that's the what are called the prompt by the computer program idle to let you know that here you can type what you want and it's <coughs> the input. So just keep that in mind. That's just an idle shell prompt. The prompt is a, a thing the computer program usually puts out on the screen to the user to let you know <coughs> what you, you should do or you, that you can do something. Now, uh, we've talked about here the uh, calculations. Well, another thing that's uh, useful is sometimes you want to just put down something and let yourself and, and the, everybody else that looks and reads this, but what you meant. So you can do something like pound sign. What that says is, ah, I, I did some stuff to Python, but I wanted to remind myself and others what I did. And that's called often a comment. And in Python uh, and virtually every other language uh, that has a, a computer language, so often there's a thing where you say, okay, I want to just put some text down, not have the computer do it, but remind people that uh, this is what I did. And so here is, if we do execute this, it, it executed the Python code, but it said, oh, that's a comment. We'll just disregard that. All right, so that, uh, and that's just a couple of things uh, uh, to remember about when you're looking at this. So, by the way, uh, uh, if you look at the slides, uh, uh, virtually everything I have here, I did uh, in a uh, in an example code and, uh, You'll find it in the in the slides, uh, the exercise. We'll, we'll mention it a, a later, I think. Um, let's see. I remind myself. Uh, okay. Um, we'll skip around a little bit. Okay. We have a calculator. It does arithmetic. Now, anybody here who's, who's used a calculator before, a sophisticated calculator, knows that in addition, but trying just doing numbers. Uh, what you'd like to be able to do is what called uh, variables. You'd like to be able to save some numbers uh, and then reuse them and mnemonically or remember. For example, let's say uh, let's see um, And you should try this. So what that did is it, it took the, it, the, the Python code as a uh, year salary. And it, it, it just puts a, uh, you know, a, a name uh, for the value you're going to save. And uh, it can be letters. I usually use lowercase. And then if you want to have like two words, but you really can't, you have to have a single uh, a string for Python to understand is a single variable. You can put this underscore, uh, which just allows you to, to have two words together and treat it as one. So, ah, oh, we said 50,000 in a year of salary and month salary. We said year salary uh, divided by 12. And if we go down here, So there we have uh, the capability, in addition to calculations, uh, Python and virtually all the other computer languages uh, provide the capability of having what are called variables, i.e. named uh, things that you can store values in. Now, of course, this makes uh, for a lot uh, easier uh, and to do things. For example, uh, one could say, Let's go, we notice we did a up barrel and we say, okay, let's, let's make this uh, uh, 500,000. And then we'll just go up to uh, month salary, it does a calculation, we'll do that calculation. And then we go up and 
And sure enough, uh, large, we changed the value of year salary. We reran the calculation that made month salary and the month salary indeed now contains the a bigger number. All right, so that's, uh, that sort of gives us a capability of another thing that uh, you know, Python provides the capability, uh, calculations and uh, variables that you can put uh, uh, initial values and calculations. Okay, um, let's see, we're inductions, okay. Uh, Let's see, I'm just trying to keep track of our time because we did take some time to introduce and uh, uh, do things, but let's see, I think we're okay. Uh, okay, so uh, here we have uh, calculations, arithmetic calculations, uh, variables to contain those. And well, what else uh, do we have in um, um, the, the, the computer programs might need to do. Well, you've seen things in, in computer, your ATM machine. Uh, obviously, you have more than numbers. You have a uh, text. Well, uh, indeed, you can specify uh, quotes and say, and uh, hopefully people are, are trying to do these things. Uh, and if you have a problem, let me know. So uh, look at that. Ray is a text string. and uh, when we evaluate it, notice it has the single text here instead of the double quotes. Well, uh, Python only has one way to do things. So it arbitra it, 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 for this uh, example, it had to make a choice or I don't have to make a choice. You can go back and say, uh, and you can do that and notice it's, it's it is single quotes will work just like double quotes. Uh, and you put uh, a string. So <coughs> in that, in fact, uh, now you can say, okay, you have you have text strings in the world. You can say, uh, and of course, you can then say. Plus, but in plus you use, uh, I bet you guess what happens. Oh, sure enough, it puts, it, it concatenates. And so in plus the arithmetic, it says, oh, we know what that means, addition. Well, in the uh, community they decide, well, uh, we'll use plus, it doesn't make sense to add, uh, uh, add strings together, but we can sort of concatenate them together. I sort of like the people who said, well, two plus two and then 22. Well, no, addition works differently. But in text strings, they do that. Now, you can go back up here and then you can say, oh, okay, uh, I don't want, I want something in between. So you can say, quote, and put a space and plus and, whoop. Oh, well, now see what happened there? Uh, notice what I did here is I made a mistake, a logical mistake. Uh, I really wanted to do, uh, I really wanted not to add the string last name. I wanted to add the variable last name. And there we are. So there we are. We have the capability in, uh, in addition to doing arithmetic, uh, strings, we can, take those strings and arithmetic and add them to uh, uh, variables. So what's useful is um, we know so, in, so far we just sort of uh, done it uh, in an expression and hit enter and have it uh, idle printed out. Well, in a more sophisticated program, you probably want some little bit more control over printing things out. So there is a function print. And it will print 
<laughs> now you say, well, gee, that's uh, more stuff than just saying hello, but you can, uh, because print has a little bit more flexibility, you can do print and Now you have a way of doing something a little bit more uh, uh, flexible. You can put uh, things out that your strings, your your names, and your value, uh, and then you can put uh, the uh, actual uh, uh, contents. All right. So there, there we have uh, a, a useful, and we'll get use that. You'll you'll find you use print uh, a lot because that's in in a, in your Python programs as opposed to uh, you know, exercising on an idle command shell, you'll find yourself wanting to uh, print out values and you'll use print. And notice it just, and in fact, if you just do print, notice uh, idle's uh, nice that it puts out a, a little um, cheat sheet, if you will, that says, oh, okay, print takes values and then uh, any comma separated list of values. And then there's some other things about, well, what's it gonna put between these and what's it gonna do at the end? Uh, the default is it puts a space in between each one of these things, as you saw. And at the end, it puts out, we call this a shorthand for new line, which means often the carriage return line feed in the old days, but you can just say it's a shorthand for putting out a, a new line. If, if you didn't want uh, the things to have, or you wanted different things to separate your values, you could specify these things in your print. And uh, other things, the default here, whoop, where do we? Uh, it decides, uh, this file thing that we'll learn uh, much later is a way to, uh, instead of having the stuff come out to the screen, uh, it could go out to a, a, a file on your computer to save the results. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, um, just, uh, I, I will, let's say, um, Okay. Don't. It's complaining because uh, it's, com it's complaining. Ah, okay. Somehow it's, uh, I got confused and it's uh, deciding that my version of idle there is, uh, okay, so let's just, let's go back and restart. Idle. That can be occasion. You can get that in that situation for one reason or another. Okay, um, now let's let's say I, 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 I didn't remember that I, I started new, so I can say, I wanted to I, I, I wanted to print out a and the, and oops because what does it do it says uh, sometimes if you make a mistake meaning or at least idle doesn't uh, Python doesn't know what you try to do it'll often say something to the effect of uh, oh I don't understand and this is the way it is and it tries to, to tell you exactly where it found the problem and often the next to last line is uh, what the Python statement was and then it'll say something like ah. Oh, Name A is not defined. And what it means is 
Oh, you asked for uh, something that looks like you want a, a variable, but it doesn't, uh, you know, I don't know about it. And that's because, of course, uh, you had forgotten to uh, specify what A is. So, of course, if you said A equals two, and you went back and tried to run it again, ah, it prints it right. But the main thing is, don't get flustered if you see this. Often, uh, uh, Python is just trying to, to let you know uh, it didn't understand. And because it has a limited sense of what you might uh, meant, it often is, it talks in this rather uh, simplistic language. And it's often very precise, exact, uh, but uh, it, may, it may mean, for example, uh, let's say I was back here. And really what I, I meant to say, uh, uh, you know, I actually typed that. Uh, well, that's because, oh, maybe what I really did is I meant to, I meant to say A, but I accidentally typed AB. So it wasn't that AB was something that was not defined so much as I made a typo. Well, often, you know, Pi can't, can't, can't figure out what you meant. So it's going to try its best to at least be helpful. Uh, for example, if I want to say, you know, A equals five and I, uh, accidentally put a, a one in front of the A. Uh, generally, that is, uh, you can't start a variable. The rules are, and we'll go into more levels uh, or more detail at some time. Uh, main thing is, you, you can't start a variable name with a number. And you can think about it as uh, Python would have a lot of difficulty trying to figure out what's a number and what's a, what's a, a variable name uh, if you allowed it it allowed variables to start with a number because normally you could say, oh, anything that starts with an, a letter or an underscore uh, is probably a, you know, a variable name. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it'll try its best to tell you, oh, something went wrong. And, uh, you know, you'll just have to try to figure out uh, the best, uh, what, what it said and what you hoped to have. Um, Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, any questions? All right, I'm gonna go a little fast and hopefully you're, you're trying out and then uh, at some later time, you'll hopefully try all these types of examples and, and more some. Uh, now uh, we talked about uh, redo line, you can go up arrow to, to the line and then press enter. Uh, a, a little trick is, uh, sometimes it says a lot of stuff. If you hit Alt and uh, uh, P, I, I think on a contr it's Control P on a Mac. Uh, if you hit Alt P, it'll just cycle through going backwards what you've done. So you can go back to, oh, that's what I wanted to do. And then I wanted to, uh, oops, because uh, in this case, when you go Alt P, it goes directly to opening the thing. So you don't have to do enter to open it. You just say, oh, I'm there. And now I can go backspace, get rid of the B, hit enter, and uh, I've changed it. So the Alt P just allows you to go cycle through the you know, expressions. Uh, and often that uh, gives you a little faster access to changing things. Um, but mind you, uh, Unlike when you, when you go up arrow, you have to type a enter, and that opens the thing. And I can change it. Whereas if I go Alt P, I'm right there, and I don't hit enter, because if I hit enter, it's going to execute it right away, like that. But if I do Alt P, I can then, I'm right there, open it, and I can change Okay, um, all right, so we have the print. Uh, we have a few of the things about changing things. Um, let's see, uh, we'll talk, we'll, we could do more of these things, but for the moment, I think we wanna get to 
uh, a very meaty uh, addition, and that is um, when we do this, notice when we did this stuff uh, and you're following along, uh, it, it's very good for, for short, uh, um, let's see, ta -ta -ta, oh, we didn't go back down. Ah, here we are. Um, we're, we can make very small examples here. And that's nice when you want to try out things, uh, see what, oh, gee, this works, or no, it doesn't work. Or, uh, but so it's, it's, it's quite good for that, for simple one line testing or for few line. But it's not so great for long, more complicated use because um, anything is, is doable, but not as, uh, not as good as a, a full fledged editor. So uh, maybe what we want to do is take a little bit further and say, okay, we can put Python in a file and then execute it all at once. Uh, that's fairly easy. We'll show it to you uh, almost immediately. Uh, it enables, when we put it in the file, it enables, uh, or at least facilitates, uh, reuse of that code. And also it sets up for making changes uh, a lot easier than you know, going up arrow and, and things, especially if you have more than one line you want to change. So we want to find a way to put code in a file. And this is a little, now I'm going to have to get to a point where you're going to have to uh, know, I will not know exactly what your uh, environment looks like. But I, I suggest we try this here. And that says, let's create a file uh, called my work. And then we'll use that as a template for many new small examples. Now, how do we how do we do that? Well, we come up to our idle shell. We go, oh, before I, I go, let's let's just say, let's say you've invested a lot of time in doing some changes and, and some testing, and you say, gee, it'd be nice to have uh, a way to save this. Now I believe you can go and print the window, but that's and that's all fine for printing, but Really what you'd like to do is save it and maybe look at it some later time. So if you go up to file and you say, I want to save and I go save, and up comes a, uh, you know, a window, just like when you save it, like in Mac or Word or what have you. And now what you really want to try to do is find the, and, and I, I can't help you too much, about navigate to where you save the introduction to programming. And um, uh, what I know comes up with, and this will be different for everybody, is some quick access. And if you find something that looks like it's close to where you're looking, you can pick that. Or you can start all the way into C and go, uh, you know, users uh, and so on. But for right now, <coughs> main thing is uh, I find the introduction of programming. And then what I did is I created a, oh, this is, do I create it? Ah, my work. Now, if you didn't create my work, uh, and uh, I, I'm just suggesting you put it, you know, where you save the introduction, you could put it anywhere. And if you didn't have uh, my work as a folder, uh, you could create it by going, you know, right click, new folder. And in my case, I already have it, but I'll just put my your work. And then I could say, okay. Um, I want to go to that. And then what I do is I, I just said I was going to create a file. And I'll create a file. We said we we're going to make it uh, just something simple. So I, my work dot, oh, yeah, dot py for Python. And where did it? Uh,
Uh, let's see. Did I close the window? Oh, probably did. Okay. Oh, say you did, did something I got. You created a file and you say, well, oh, I forgot it. Well, if you go up to file and you go recent files, you see the, the line at the top. It says, ah, that's the file I just created. And oh, as I'm sorry, I, I I got doing two things at once. Sorry. Remember what I said? I said I, I said you wanted to save this this uh, your 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 idle thing. So what I I should have said is okay. File, save as, and in this case, it was going to be your work. And then they say, okay, let's, I got ahead of myself. I wanted to create, I, I do want you to create a, a my work doc. So let's just, this is the session with all those uh, arithmetic. So you can save your site idle. And then what I usually do is I say, okay, it's going to be 2021-094, okay? So that's just our idle session. And uh, now let's say, oh, okay, uh, you've finished your thing and you're going to come back here and you're going to start idle again. And voila, you can say, oh, I remember the idle session. I'm going to go back and, and look. Let's check recent files. And you say, oh, there it is. Uh, you know, I, I, I uh, saved it. And voila, here it is, uh, that idle session that I could go take a look at. So just in case you want to save that idle session for reasons or just to dwell on it sometime, you can do that relatively easy. But now we're going to try to start uh, and get ready to do, quote, real programming. I'm programming with files that have little programs. So we say, OK, let's go back and say, um, I'm going to open, uh, I'm going to create a new file. So I say, new file. And what I want to do before I put any work into it, and that's a you know, good practice. I'm going to save it as, and uh, voila! I have to say, okay, let's let's go find uh, where uh, we said this time we're going to say your work. But you could you could say you could make a, a new folder called my work. I just made a, your work because I had already gotten something. So let's say let's let's in fact go to. Um, my work, why not? Uh, here are a bunch of examples. Uh, let me go to your work because I don't want to. I want to. Don't want to distract you. So let's go up here and say your work is empty. And I say, okay, I want to create um, a, a new in your work directory. I want to create a new um, a new file, and we're going to call it. Uh, um, my work. It opens, in this case, it's already existed. It's protecting you against writing over it. Well, in this case, I'm just going to say I'm going to replace it with what I got. Okay, so now we just created in your work directory, uh, which will add more files as you build new examples. We're going to, we just said we could have created an empty file called mywork.py. So let's put, what I like to do is a, a one line top thing. So it'll say my, and you should try this, work.py. And then usually I put my, the, the date, which is usually something, uh, let's see, I think I do something like uh, month, uh, or no, I, I used to say a day, I usually put my initials 
and then I say, uh, usually the reason. In this case, it's a template file. And maybe I put a, a space in there. Okay, and then I just say save. Okay, so this, uh, so we we keep that there. Uh, we can close this out for the moment, and then say, okay, I created we created a, a a temporary little file that has just a couple of lines in it. The good thing about that is we know where that's going to be. Where is it going to be? It's going to be in our work directory, and by and large, if we want to see it, we can just take a look at uh, recent files, and sure enough it is right there. And if we want to bring it back, we just click on that and it brings it back. So then we say, okay, let's, uh, uh, and we saved it and we then put the, and we saved it before we made the, 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 the changes in it so that we don't accidentally save it in the wrong place or over something else. So here we are. We want to make, uh, I said, we made our my word. Doesn't have anything except a simple line or two that says, this is an empty file that we're going to use as a placeholder to remind us where we're putting files. So now we say, let's write the, the what's called a classical Hello World program. It's called that because virtually every programming language for the last 50 years, when they start off, they say, let's do the simplest programming we can to you know, show we know how to program and learn the language. Very the simplest thing. So in fact, we have an example what it might look like. It says the print, which we looked at, hello world, and then maybe put a second line in, you know, my name is and our product name in. Okay, now here is a case we can use uh, a, a thing by going file. New, where's our, uh, new file, and it starts out with an empty file. And then we could do the, the print hello and all that sort of good stuff. But the problem is, if you look at it, what happens if we say, save as, Oh, look at that. It, it goes in this random silly place that's up here where Python is. And that's kind of hard to remember where that is compared to where you've been saving our stuff. So we said, ah, let's not do that. This is an example. It is still legit. But let's say, ah, what the instructor said is, let's go take advantage of that template file that we know is in recent. So we're going to go click. And up it comes, and we say, aha, uh -huh. now we can write print hello world. But before we do the print world, because if we do this print world in here right now and save it, what will we do? We will destroy my world or my work. So what we're going to do is we brought it up, and before we make any changes, we say, ah, let's save as. And then say, ah, oh, what are we going to save it as? Well, we we have our example, and we say, oh, it's going to be uh, hello underscore world dot py. So we go down here, and we say, ah, uh, hello world dot py in. We like to see where it is. It's in there, an introduction to programming, your work or my work, depending on how you decided. And we just say save. Now notice we, we save it in this new file, but we haven't changed anything. So it still has the old stuff, but at least we know <coughs> easily where it is. And we know that the nice thing is, We got it sort of laid out and we have the uh, date and time. And often you only have to change one or two of these because it's pretty much when you do a lot of work, you're often doing it in the same day or month or year. And then we say, okay, uh, we can say, uh, in this case, we can say um, something like author. We are the author. So, 
And then we can go down here and say uh, something like uh, description. Uh, So even a little uh, description is good. And then we can say, ah, print hello. And just as a cheat, you can go like this. Oh, you, maybe you can't because you don't have the thing, but often you'll find yourself getting pieces of code from other places. And you can't, oh, well, I didn't save it all, so. But let's say, just for the giggles, we'll say, let's say I did that. And now how do I run this program? Well, I say, I, I know here and I say, run, run module. You can do an F5, or at least that's uh, on Windows, or it'll probably say that on other examples. And you can say, run module. Now, notice what it says. Oh, wait a minute, it's save before run a check. See, that's uh, check is just a run, but don't just check it out. Don't, don't actually run it. Source must be saved, okay to save. Now, just before you do this, you can go back and say, oh, did I accidentally, am I actually gonna clobber something I, I already have? Well, in this case, no. So I can just say, okay. And oh, what's it say? Unexpected EOF, which you mean end the file while parsing, i.e. while it's figuring out what's going on. So we say, okay. And then we just say, oh, okay, well, we, what we're missing here is the parentheses. So then we go up here to say run, run module, and sure, who says save, well, well, you know, well, you made the change, so you say, okay. And what, hello is, oh, but you is, we, we, your name, we really, we really meant to say, so we can go back, we can go back here and say, Well, you notice uh, this, uh, this editor that we get from Idle, uh, often you can select things and you can copy, but you can also select things and then start typing and it will, uh, it'll, uh, you know, replace. So, and then we say file and we say, uh, we can just go back in here and say run. And we get pretty cavalier about saying this. That we know what we're doing. And sure enough, so there we have it. We have, uh, we've, uh, hopefully everybody here has run this program. If you haven't, please, please uh, speak up and, and tell me uh, what's the problem. Well, hi, Ray. Yes. Yeah, there's a journal right here. I have, I think, two questions. Sure. The first one is, um, so when you make an error, like a mistake, so you are not able to delete it, right? Well, well, let's see. Wait a second. And by the way, can you can you uh, uh, click on your uh, video? I, I was hoping that people would, when they caught a question, they would put up the video so I would see. Uh, I can see them <laughs> if if you don't oh, mind. Uh, okay, I don't know how to. I'm. Oh, it, I'm it, it, if I'm, if you. If, I if, have two screens now, so I'm not sure. But don't worry about it. If you, if you can't, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Now, the first thing is, if you have an error, and let, let's go back here. Let, let's say um, we had a uh, error. We had no parentheses, and we say, okay, we're going to run it. Uh -huh. And it says, okay, and it comes out like that, right? Uh, no, it says like Phoenix error, that kind of like. It's like the first part of your class. So when you print like um, a equals to two, and then you put a like a, some mistake, and yes. like so you are not able to go back to fix it. You have to do it right, like all over again. Oh, okay. Right? Well, uh, let me see. Uh, if I said um, uh, a equals something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, something like that. So you are not okay. able to go back to. So no, no, you can, you can, you go up arrow, up arrow, and to the line in the, in the question. You hit enter, it prints the line again, and then you do that. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, but but the invalid syntax is still there. Like you. Oh yeah, but, then, but remember that's that just remember all this is is instruction and, and helping it. And this is not a 
this is not a paper to to publish. Uh, it uh, if you if you wanted to you make it look pretty, uh, you could save the the text and and use an editor. Actually, you could use the same editor and you could uh, you know massage it into some pretty something. So don't worry about the fact that the uh, that that's just a message there that uh, in some sense uh, is helpful because if you save this thing, if you go up here and say, "Oh, I, I, I that's the very thing I want to I want to keep that in mind." <coughs> if I go up here and say "save," and I usually say "save as" because I want to be sure that that I uh, I know where it's going, so I say "save as," and then uh, oops, uh, it's going to save as, and I have to figure out so I. I go up here and say introduction of programming, uh, uh, and then I go here to, uh, in this case, your work, and then I come here and I say, okay, uh, and there's idle, and, and let's say I, I want to, that's the one I saved before, and this is a quick way of, of getting almost the full name you want and out of something that's already there, and then I can say B, and, and this will save, uh, you know, I uh, underscore. So I say save, and now if I go back here and say, okay, let me look at this, so I can say file, recent files, and sure enough, there's the the underscore b, and up comes, uh, where is, uh, da, 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 shouldn't it? Let's see, I did file, recent files. Oh, I see. Uh, it actually overdid the same thing. So let's let's say I I, I get rid of this. And I I go back here and I say, uh, and now I say, okay, let's go file. Uh, and I say, uh, recent files. And I say, oh, there's my recent file. And I go up, and there is the name I had. And now I can, you know, I can. I'd go back here and delete it if I wanted to. If I were going to make a report and say, okay, this is what I did today and I, and I didn't want to show my errors, I, I could do something like that. But those, those errors that it says are just uh, help, uh, you know, help uh, to, to you know, remind you what happened. They're, they're not things that, uh, uh, you know, they, you don't have to get rid of them and you probably shouldn't worry about them, okay? Okay, thank you. All right. All right. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, my, our class is, oh, I, every, every time I say, gee, I, it, things take, uh, um, let's see. Uh, I will, a uh, uh, very important exercise. Here we go. Okay. Let's take the exercise. And let's make a, a new exercise. Goodbye, world. All right. Um, we may go a little bit over here. Uh, I was trying faithfully to keep the, the last half hour is totally question and answer. But let's let's see if we can. Uh, exercise for the class. Okay. We're going to make a goodbye, world program. Okay. Hint, start with the program closest to your goal, i.e., maybe, hello, world. Uh, save as, so my guess is uh, grab the Hello World program from wherever you have it. S save as uh, the new Goodbye World, or maybe lowercase Goodbye World. Uh, uh, yeah, here's a, say, you know, save, save it as this, and then modify it by making the change to say print goodbye. And in fact, if here we are, we have a, a little example. Let's see, I guess we're not gonna get to those. Um, and um, let's try it uh, um, right now. I will go ahead and uh, uh, if you think you know how to do it, do it. If you are, uh, in questions, uh, you can follow along with uh, me. Okay, uh, so everybody uh, should try and say, okay, we're gonna make the good, our exercise is gonna make goodbye world 
goodbye underscore world dot py. Uh, we're going to, I guess, uh, I had to re uh, since I closed it, I had to restart. So we say, okay, what was our hit? Oh, our hit was to go find something that was uh, close to what we wanted to find. That's a very recurrent theme here in programming. Don't start with a blank page unless you absolutely have to. So we say, okay, recent files, what do we have? Uh, we have Hello World. Uh, that sounds good. Let's, let's start with that. And up comes that. And uh, mind you, we had just made a little mistake with that. We, we, had, uh, we forgot the print. So uh, let me just save that for a second. Now we say, okay, normally we, oh, we come with our program that's pretty close to what we want, but oh, wait a minute, it's hello world.py. We need to, before we do anything, very important, before we make any changes, and I'll tell you how many times I've messed up forgetting that and, and wiping out something I, I didn't want to. So we're gonna save as, and what are we gonna save it as? Goodbye world. So we're going to go here and say, okay, let's. Goodbye world.py. So we just save it. All right. Now we haven't made any changes yet. We just saved it. And so what do we do before we do anything? Well, good practice says we're going to update. the things and often notice that we put this off and down it's just a little bit tight but it says ah adapted so if we come back to this program and say gee um this is interesting but hmm, i don't do uh, where does this come from? And often the adapted gives us a chance to either use this as a sample or maybe we should go back and see what this program was adapted from. And then we say simple uh, huh? And then we say, oh, okay, what we're gonna change is Sometimes my print, my typing is poor. And uh, we could change our. And we say, okay, let's run it. And oops, it says save, must be saved. Now is our last chance to say, we're going to save it over this file name. So if we accidentally forgot, this gives us a chance to maybe not save it over something we didn't want to destroy. But in our case, we say, yep, this looks good. So we say, okay. And there we are. Goodbye, world. Okay. How's it going, everybody? Any uh, problems? So you've done your second program. Excellent. Okay, any questions so far? All right, now, uh, oh, there are lots of things we'd like to do. Uh, I guess there's, there's one thing that's in, uh, and we'll just do it so that we can follow. Uh, we're gonna do a beginning of the program. Uh, let me think about this. Hold a second. No, I, I would like to, to give you a, a start. So we're going to come down here and start our instruction, our course project. All right. This is a project we're going to develop, you're going to develop over our whole uh, class. And it's essentially a real live program, real life program that you will create called 20 questions. I know how many of people have dealt with 20 questions. Uh, anybody uh, here never heard of 20 questions? You can, you can say so. 
Anyway, Can I have another question. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So I think like I feel the difference between the two windows. So one is like with the Python, like you have like um the type and type help, like that kind of, and then you have the little like little arrows, like the the little arrows. And then the other one is the one that we use just now, the goodbye world thing. Like, so when you put enter, there's nothing happen. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Like, What's the difference between these two? Oh, very, very windows. good, very good uh, observation. Uh, in essence, what's the difference between uh, this thing, goodbye world here, uh, where you do something and nothing happens until you run it, and down here where you say, And the media you hit her into enter and something happens. Well, the answer is these are two different programs, if you will. This here <coughs> is what they call an idle shell. And what that means is it is a thing that you can type into, and everything you type into it, it interprets as what you want it done. In this case, when you type this thing in, it says, aha, they want to take this print. P-R-I-N-T, left print, quote, quote F-L-O, quote, print, and close print, and do it exactly right now. So it is a program, Idle Shell is a program that's executing and essentially looking for pieces of Python that you end with a new line and doing those bits of Python. Okay, so that's, that's exactly how that works. Python takes this, the idle, the idle program <coughs> takes this print fuba and passes it to Python and evaluates exactly what that produces and says it prints foo. This is a editor, meaning it takes, this is a editor whose screen is a, a screen you fill with text and <coughs> it essentially does nothing until you say something special. And what you mean by special is you could go here and say save, and it would take that those texts in the window and store it in a place you tell it. Or you could say run module, and what it does is it takes all the text in this screen and interprets it, uses Python to interpret it, and runs that, ex, uh, executes that Python program. So the difference between these two <coughs> is what you can look here is, it's really an editor. It's a word processor that takes text that you type and doesn't do anything with that text except display it. <coughs> I mean, does stuff like it, in, it makes these these things color coded to sort of tell you what's going on. But other than that, it doesn't do anything special with that until you say, do something special. In this case, you could say, save it or save it as, or things like that, or print it. But the thing we do usually when we set up a file of code is we say, ah, oh, we want to run the module. And what run the module does is it says, okay, I'm going to take that text and execute it as a Python program or script, often called. Does that make sense? You can say if it doesn't. Well, I, I agree. agree. <laughs> oh, yeah, go oh, ahead. Sorry. Yes. Um, okay, I have a question here, but um, the Python shell, uh, after the prompt, if you're typing anything, does you, it... This, this right here? Yeah. Okay. Does it affect the other window? No. That is a file. Not, not unless you explicitly do something like go find the file, but no, no, it, it's this Python... Uh, I, the idle shell is uh, it does just treats the little Python you type and executes it, interprets it, and executes it as you say. So but this, why 
but why yeah. bother why why do we um why do we need to to i mean well, to write they, after they, the prompt they, 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 the main reason is because this works well uh enough for one or two or three lines of code this here works well for hundreds of lines of code think of it this way if you had the type of code in here every line for 50 lines and then you found a mistake halfway up you would spend a lot of time uh, making changes so the answer is most programs are big enough and it doesn't have to get too many lines before it is where the the, the python idle shell is uh, difficult to work with. I mean, it's just, it does a real nice job for one or two lines, an excellent job for one or two lines. But after you get to that, uh, it doesn't work. I mean, it really is difficult to use. So that's the answer. Python idle shell works real good for little examples. But for anything, even this big, if, if you had to do this, uh, uh, in the idle shell, um, you would find it, uh, you know, if you got like, you could say, okay, first of all, idle also has that limitation that if you put, if you copy and paste more than one line at a time, you have to enter and then, so you notice that it, it does it, it does it right then and there and doesn't allow you to to wait for the whole thing, whereas this does the whole thing at once. So that's the main thing. The idle shell is good for simple, shorthanded things, but not so good for uh, longer programs. That's and, and longer programs means maybe more than two or three lines long. Okay. It's good for short things, but it's cumbersome for longer things. Okay, so that's what the idle yeah. shell is for. Idle shell is good for practicing various things, using a calculator, uh, seeing how uh, certain things work. But for anything bigger than that, it, it, you'll you'll probably want to put it in a a file and run it as the file. Um, can we save the files on on idle shell? Yeah, like what you said, the calculation or this. You you can save the the shell, the the, the 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 all this whole thing, including all the things. You can save them, save as from in this in the shell. You can save them as uh, as a um, is, is, py. Yeah, and and, and so what I'm saying is, oh. And it's sort of like I save these these here as examples. So I I save them. Uh, but remember, it has all the all the little things and the errors and all that sort of stuff. So it's it's not really. It might be good for practice or for remembering things, but it's it's not. Uh, it it doesn't make for an easy program out of it. Okay, I have a quick question. So when you open, so when you just like open your computer and then you try to open the idle, so but what window will pop up? Is that the it, short the the one with the short lines, the shell will pop up, or the one that uh, like the the the? Well, try, why don't you why don't you try it? Pop up? If, if when I click my uh, shortcut, it comes out with a shell. Okay. Then you don't work on this. Then you open your file to work on the other window. Yeah, you work on if you want to do file programming, which is what we'll mostly do. You'll 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 open uh, Idle and you'll go. Or you, or if you have another editor, and then you'll just say, uh, often you'll say recent file, and if you've worked on it recently, you'll pick it out of the the recent files. Uh, most of the time, as I said, hopefully you won't go with a blank sheet of paper. Hopefully, if you want to do a new program 
what you'll do is you'll go to uh, something that's close to what your file is, or you'll go to uh, uh, my work and you'll come up with that. And then you'll just, and then you'll save it as, uh, you know, new work or some other name. Okay, thank you. That makes sense to me. Okay. All right. Uh, I apologize for going over our time, but I really do want to get people a chance to uh, uh, do a couple things. First of all, is start out on our course project. I'm thinking of a number. Uh, the player guesses. Uh, the program tells if it's a higher or lower number. Uh, and then after the, the player guesses, uh, the program now offers to play the game again. All right, so that's a simple thing. It just, you know, and often uh, there are techniques for, for people. In this case, it's, it's 20 questions using numbers. Um, I, I modified it for my, uh, my grandkids so they would pick letters uh, between A and Z. So here is, here's an example of what your output should look like at the, for the whole program. Now, we're not going to get there uh, today, uh, certainly uh, not now. But here is just what it's going to look like, if you will. Sample, uh, sample output. You know, I'm thinking of a number, the program uh, prints out, I'm thinking of a number between one and 20. Can you guess it? Remember to pe uh, press enter key to enter your guess. Good luck. And then it prints out A. And so in fact, uh, well, we'll, we'll sh uh, show you it uh, executed next time because I, I, I don't want to use up too much time here. Uh, so, you, you know, you type in 10, number 10, uh, prints out number 10, says, sorry, your input is too high. So, uh, you know, somebody guesses five, number is five. Oh, congratulations. That five is my number. Did you want to play another, a new game? Uh, enter N uh, to quit. And if we type N, uh, your program will say, see you next time. So that's, that's in essence what your, your program uh, in our project, uh, class project will, will look like. Uh, Variations on a theme, but that's that's sort of a real life program uh, to actually play a, a, a real but simple game. Now, uh, just a little bit uh, further, uh, what the program is, uh, it's going to uh, program is usually don't you don't write the whole program in one sitting. Uh, you you write a little bit and then you improve. Uh, maybe simplify it, uh, which also helps the user in addition to helping you program. Uh, here is uh, uh, an example of the first iteration, uh, which is part of the homework, okay? Uh, uh, and the iteration is to do the, the smallest part. And the smallest part is, oops, let's see, let's make it in the bigger. Uh, smallest part, which will have a name iteration, underscore one py, uh, it will just have a loop. Uh, it will ask a number and get an input uh, and print the number, enter. And it'll keep doing that for as long as you enter uh, inputs. All right, so <coughs> because we're short on time, I'll, I'll, I'll just go through it and uh, show you uh, an example. Okay, we didn't get around to showing uh, these pieces of Python yet, but there's a, uh, for looping, which is a very important aspect to programming, uh, there's a keyword, which is often specified as a, a little part of Python that always does the same thing. There's a while that does looping for a, while the condition is true. And the way to specify it always being true is saying, using the, the special constant, capital T, R-U-E, and then also the colon. And then this other aspect, which we'll, we'll just show you an example because we didn't get a chance to show you in class, uh, is uh, you can get, you can prompt the user for entering something by using the built-in function. We did, we showed a built-in function called print, well, here's another built-in function that does input. It gets, it, it takes what you put here as a prompt, and just like, you know, the, the angle, angle, angle for the, the uh, uh, we call it the Python, the um, idle, 
Well, you can put any input you want. And uh, this provides, and in fact, if we just look at the, the code, we will say this is what this is what the first iteration code, our version, uh, looks like. It has uh, a number of lines with comments, uh, tells what the, the thing is asking for, prints the number that's entered. So uh, here in this case, and you can just take this and actually create it uh, and run it, and it will create this result. The main thing is while space, capital T, lowercase r-u-e, colon, and then inf, which is a, a string, uh, which is a name of a variable that's going to contain the string that uh, uh, you get. And the input is that function we said built into Python that says, print out this string and take what they type on the keyboard and place it in this variable. And then uh, this is a little shorthand for saying, convert the string that came in to an int. And then we just print. You could actually, you could actually run this program without this line. But for right now, for future, for comparison, you'd like to convert the string that they typed in as a uh, number. And here, here, notice it prompts out the enter number, and you, the user printed a uh, typed one, and out came number colon one, which is what printed out here. And then it just loops back and does it again and again. So that's. That's uh, it's the first iteration of our uh, uh, project, and hopefully uh, you will take it and uh, you will do it uh, for homework. So uh, the homework, uh, and our homework is uh, in the intro that you got, the, the big folder you got, under presentation, under the class one, which is introduction under homework, there will be a PowerPoint uh, that is let's see, uh, introduction class intro. Did I make a mistake here? Let me just see. Um, let me see here. Is anybody trying to get a? Oh, ah, AT and T. Uh, let's just take a look at. Uh, if we look here uh, under homework, under okay, that's right. It's it's not. Uh oh, uh, we may instructor made a mistake. Uh, it is. Under oh, under a presentation, uh, which is under the intro uh, folder, uh, under class one, class underscore one, underscore introduction, you have a uh, uh, folder called homework. And in the folder homework, you have a uh, introduction.docx, which is, we will introduction. I gave you the slides. Dot, okay, and introduction.x is a, uh, and I think I actually uh, sent a, a, a file of that on your, your first email just in case you had a problem. Uh, exampling, uh, uh, pulling things out. So the main thing is uh, the homework exercises. Now, just a, a summary. It's for the homework is for your benefit and fun. Uh, do as much or as little as you can. I know people have other things in their lives besides this class. Uh, if you have any problems or questions, contact me, email me, have fun. And in, uh, say, for example, uh, more of the the stuff uh, of introduction and I think uh, you have your problems and so on. Uh, and if you get down to the introduction of, uh, 
uh, the first uh, uh, homework problem is just everything you found out. Do a, do a little spreadsheet and just put topic, example, and, and how those things are used. And, and don't feel like you have to know everything to put something down. Uh, and then the second uh, uh, problem, which is misnumbered is seven, is the Hello World program, which we, we, we went over. So just, you know, do it or redo it, depending on whether you understand it. Uh, and the Everything program is to take these things here that you've done, that you've put down, like a print statement or a if statement or a while statement and, and do a, you know, a, an example. And if you go look, uh, some of these things, the Hello World program are, uh, unless, other, unless otherwise uh, specified, uh, the homework has a subfolder that has solutions and it has, uh, often those solutions are fitting in a folder and it will have like the, the everything, uh, it will have some variation, some, some things. In this case, the everything has some cases where the program doesn't complete because you might have things that are syntax errors. And so it wouldn't, so you'd have several examples and uh, the hello world is out and so on. So, um, all right, so that, that's the, the, the homework. Uh, here is uh, it's just to sort of do what we've done over uh, in, uh, uh, if you want, there are some other examples in the, uh, if you go look in our exercises, uh, another place if you're interested, if you look up here in our Python, and if you look for, or you look for, not the introduction, but you look, you look for exercises, which is a sub director under works of, oh, all right, we went the wrong spot. Uh, keyword uses in workspace. Oh, introduction. If you look for other examples, if you look under exercises and you look for introduction, you will see, uh, in, because some of these were so early, I didn't put it in the homework. Uh, so you'll see a goodbye world and hello world examples here. Uh, you'll see a Python introduction PY, which is a much <coughs> more uh, uh, detailed, um, you know, idle example with some of the things we didn't get to. So next class, we're going to do a little bit of uh, uh, what we did here and didn't get quite get to, since uh, like everything, things take longer than you might imagine. And next uh, week, we'll have, we'll try to be more uh, religious about uh, stopping at the uh, uh, eight o'clock uh, thing for the lecture and uh, having the last half hour for questions. So given we were a little over, a lot over, uh, we got five minutes for questions. So if you have questions, please ask them. We'll probably go over a little bit. Anybody have a question about the homework, about the lecture? A Python. And, and feel like you, you're it's new stuff. So it, it is, don't feel like overwhelmed. The main thing is uh, it's little things and sort of like learning a language, if you will, and getting embedded in the uh, group and, and having difficulty uh, understanding. So hopefully uh, uh, with uh, some help, and I'm hopefully going to be the help. Uh, you can get uh, a little bit, a little start, and it'll become uh, more natural as you go on. And often, is is you don't have to become an expert. Uh, don't even have to become a programmer, but you may find it uh, nice to get a real life sense of uh, 
what it is to be a programmer. Any questions? Uh, I said, if you have a problem, or you can uh, give me a chat. Yes. Oh, you got it. You got to unmute. There you go. Just a basic question. Um, when you were uh, saving the file, we created a new file and saved, um, you know, to just save that as in the top, you um, kind of, uh, you know, redescribed what it was that you were working on, like how you changed the date and maybe the topic and the time. Uh, the, like the just the information at the top is that your best practices or is that like something that's well totally I, I guess uh, uh, it's probably my best practices uh, but then if you if mm -hmm. you get uh, you as you progress with Python there are some rather detailed descriptions of mm -hmm. of how to style mm -hmm. you know, not the language itself the law but how to how to write a program, how to write the parts of the program, how everything from how to do comments uh, to how to name variables uh, to uh, you know how to break up uh, things into various pieces. So uh, I said uh, most people, most places I've seen over language independent, uh, start with that top line as a comment, name a file date created person uh, and then maybe uh, a little bit on uh, you know what exactly the program's going to do uh, often in a, in a real life program uh, like for your example your uh, uh, your program uh, your project uh, often you'll start out and you'll you'll add comments saying what the program's going to do maybe in detail and then below that, you'll start saying, we did this, we did this, we did this. And it re it'll read like a, you know, a, a story as to how you, when you put things like together. An okay. And often what I do with the top line is I've been known to, and I've used it in a, in a production environment where you just, you push down the, the date and the user. And so it reads as a last touch this. And mm -hmm. in a real life situation, Often what people do is they, okay, let's, this thing doesn't work anymore. Let's see who touched this last. Because sometimes if you work in a group, uh, so anyway, so those, those things, uh, uh, the top line, yeah, it's very, very, very common. Uh, mm -hmm. And often what people do a real precise thing in a big organization, they might take out the, the personalities of people and stuff like that. But as far as the description as to what, gets done, they will, uh, most organizations will have some way of doing that. Some organizations will, uh, that's so important that they'll put a lot of that stuff in a database separate. But for a small time, and I call myself small time, uh, the best you can do is that top line is 90% of, of the, and the next little bit is probably another five or 10% of the of, of what's going to help document the thing because often it is, you know, when was it, what was the name of this thing? You find this little scrap of paper on your desk and say, gee, where is that file? And if you if if the scrap of paper has a file name, you know, you can use a search uh, in your uh, program and you can find it, even though it's you know way hidden because you were doing something off to the side. So those those are good habits to get to. They're not part of the language except for the fact that it starts with a pound sign but they're very good habits to get into. And, right. and they really are uh, the sort of thing that if you were looking for, if any of you are looking to get into the programming gig, uh, those are sorts of things where people will uh, like the fact that you, uh, you did it. Like in a job interview, you. you put a comment on the top of the thing saying, this is what it does, uh, that'll buy you points. Great, thank you. I'm not getting to the job today, but it will certainly, mm -hmm. if you don't do it, there will be a lot of bosses that will will say, wait a minute, this person's not a, you know, thinks they're a programmer, but it's not. So think about that. Anyway, good. Has that sort of answer it? Yes, definitely. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have a question? Because we're getting, uh, I apologize I for going over. Yes. Um, what exactly are we doing for the homework? Well, we're going to, uh, the, the homework is, 
uh, in that in that uh, introduction uh, uh, introduction dot uh, doc x uh, is a is a example of, of what the homework uh, homework is it's a uh, uh, it, it's the uh, uh, you know it, it says a class one introduction to getting going uh, everything there are just a couple of uh, uh, programs remember everything is optional you, you know but I mean what I, I hope you you have a chance to do is first thing is uh, what did you what do we touch today on uh, you know, here's an, and here's my example. Uh, you know, a program is a set of instructions. You know, uh, arithmetic operators, uh, variables. Uh, how do I get into the docs? Uh, how, let's see. Do you do you have uh, do you have Word? Um, I think so. Okay, this is a Word document. This uh, introduction doc X is a is a Word document. It is in. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, if you uh, if you save that uh, uh, introduction to programming uh, file they gave, uh, expanded it. Uh, somewhere you'll have uh, you'll get to a subdirectory called uh, presentation. And if you look under presentation, you'll see a folder for each of our classes. Class one, which we did today, class two, next week, and so on. And inside that, uh, inside that folder, you'll have a couple of things. One is you'll have the PowerPoint slides that we went over today, uh, or at least we were hoping to go over today. Uh, we have the homework, a folder inside that called homework. And inside that, you'll have a, and this goes for each week. Uh, You'll have a uh, a word document called introduction doc x doc x. You know, it's a it's a word doc, word the current version of word, if you will. And uh, if you open that uh, inside uh, and you have word, it, it should open it like it did here. And then uh, here is uh, you know for class one it tells. Everything we did uh, here's a, the first problem is a is a just a uh, not a, even a programming to just a, a, a you can a table I did it a, you know you could do it in a, a, a word uh, table or Excel table anyway it's just a list of things all the topics that you think you you we covered or touched on this week and then. Uh, uh, the uh, next program, and this should be two. I, I, some I, I'm having problems with word. Uh, a hello world program. We covered that over, but you should try to see if you could uh, uh, see if you haven't done it yet. You should uh, create that program and run it. And then the second part is you should create word, the goodbye world program, which we we went over this this in class. So you. It should you should have some pretty good sample of how to do it and you may feel like you've done it already so that's that's okay and then the everything program is sort of a follow-on i'm sorry for the misnumbering is the things that you put in topics here uh and sort of examples here you could write a program that that has you know a print statement a variable or this or that and then run it uh, if you notice that we have some cases where we talked about errors, uh, your errors will stop the program. So to make it work, you you may have to do uh, the two programs, you know, one with the error and one without. Um, okay, so then, and then uh, the 20 questions class project, uh, it's, remember, it's a, it's a marathon. It's not a, it's not a sprint. Uh, redo the iteration one that we, we showed you in class. Uh, we just did it like here. So uh, want to do that on your own. Uh, I mean, the, you okay? You can copy and it's fine. But I mean, you don't have to. It's not like a uh, the programming is not like a closed book exam. It's like use everything you got available and cheat as much as you can. Uh, they're copying from other things. So. Uh, 
the 20 questions, and then there's iteration two, if you can get to it. Uh, and the iteration two, we didn't cover iterations very much because we sort of ran out of time. But if you get a chance, uh, uh, the first one is just a loop, you know, like that. We we just uh, we use the input and uh, just print it out. The second iteration is uh, which we may not have, we haven't got, we certainly haven't gotten to the the testing, the if statements and such. So you you either have to, if you want, uh, you may want to uh, uh, look up if statements. So I think uh, we haven't shown the help. You can say. I, I did that answer your question? Say that again. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so that that's the that's the homework. And as I said, uh, it's more than you can. I mean, I, I put it there so that it would be uh, something that every anybody, some people could do some, and maybe you know even an aggressive person, it might take them uh, a little bit of time to do. Like these things about the my my ATM and and maybe the second twenty questions that might be a little bit much for the the class so far since we didn't quite get to uh, um, you know we really didn't cover uh, all the pieces. We were aggressive today, I think we were or we were I was aggressive in, in putting down the things I I was hoping. I'm like the guy who who knows something and uh, uh, about something new new gizmo and wants every world person know about it. So I, I go blathering on. So anyway, so that, that's the homework. Uh, some of the things I think you can do because they're pretty much going and looking at what we covered in class and just trying to do it yourself. Feel feel good that you can make a little program like Hello World or Goodbye World or the Loop program and you can do it, you know, again and, and maybe again with a little small change because next week we'll, we'll follow on from that and we'll get. Uh, we'll probably uh, start on with uh, from the first first work. If you notice, if you really go through all the whole, you'll notice things get a little uh, blank toward the uh, last classes because I I know from experience that uh, it's very ambitious to do everything. So we're gonna, uh, but we don't have to do everything. You you will not have to do everything to get some benefit. But we wanted to you know give some options, the capabilities. I know some people will be very aggressive and I wanted to give them some, some things to reach. So I apologize for going over. Uh, as I said, next week we'll be more, uh, uh, hopefully more uh, uh, strict on, on ending the lecture and providing a full half hour for, for questions. So all I wanna do is uh, if you have any questions you wanna put in the uh, uh, chat, do it right now. I'm gonna save the chat. Uh, before I quit. And uh, if you have any other questions, uh, you got my email. So please uh, send it. If you have a problem with the homework or the homework's unclear or what have you, please ask because uh, programming can be very uh, humbling and lonely if you don't have uh, you know, at least somebody that can you can bounce uh, a question or two on. And I know from experience. Anybody last minute? Because I know we've we've kept uh, uh, Laura here more than uh, <laughs> more than we we hope to. Last question. Okay, I think we're uh, outside. Uh, let's see. Uh, I do want to say before you uh, uh, shut the meeting down, I want to see if I can find the.